Hey everyone, hope you're all good. As you can see, this is not my usual way of shooting a video. It is a completely off the cuff video. I may not even make it into a final video. However, I just wanted to record this process that I'm doing to share it with you all and hopefully it may help a few of you out there. So let me talk you through what we're going to be doing in this video. So we've got a load of 20mm perspex here which I've got to machine. Now all the jobs are going to start off in the bottom left hand corner but I need some way to keep them all consistent so that when they go into the onto the bed of the CNC they all stay in exactly a 90 degree position and it also means that I can then set the, um, the origin to the same place every time so I don't have to manually try and find it. So we'll move over to the CNC now and I can show you what I'm doing to try and get this in place. So here we've got a piece of 10mm perspex that's fixed down to the bed and I've just been using it for some testing if I show you the back here we can just see a few different um, cuts that I've been doing one to test the texture but also the tolerance of the cut to see how accurate it's going to be now if I come down to this bottom left hand corner I'll try and explain what I'm trying to achieve now what I want to be able to do is to simply have a fixed position where I can drop a block in and it's always going to be that same position. I can then set the coordinates within UGS and when I create a macro button, so I can put this piece of material in place, click the macro and it will always return to that corner there without any worry. It will be the exact coordinates each time. So basically what I'm going to do as the starting point is we can see I've screwed this down. I just pre-drilled some holes, countersunk them. And then what I'm essentially going to do is cut out like a bit of an L shape like this and once that is cut out that can then be my fixed bracket it will be a perfect 90 degree cut and it will also always be fixed in place so that when, once that's cut out I can bring the block in place it into that corner as I say dip, run that macro and the bit will always return to exactly that same spot every time I come to machine one of these blocks so the cut has completed, as we can see there, it's gone all the way through to the bed. If I undo this quickly, and bring in one of the blocks from earlier, as we see now, I've got a dead 90 degree corner to slide that into, and it means every time I bring a new block in, it's going to go to the exact position. Now what we need to do is set up the macro to make sure the machine itself, once I click a button, will always come back to this start point. It's the X and Y positions we're interested in. The depths of the uh, perspex will vary, but it's to get the bit to return right to that corner every single time without fail. So despite this not being a formal video, I've now reverted back to filming this traditionally to make it easy for you to watch. So what we need to do now basically is send the machine into the home position and work our way back to this corner. And that will tell us the coordinates that we need as part of the macro or as part of the G code that we're going to write. What I've done to help us out is clamp a piece of metal block into the corner position in here and this will help us find the exact corner within this bit that we've just cut out. I've also installed a V-bit into the router. Obviously the V-bit will just allow us to be a little bit more precise when we bring it over to try and align it with this corner here. So the first thing we need to do is send this to home which will push it all the way back into that far right hand corner. We'll then work our way back to this corner here and make a note of the coordinates or the measurements that it's just travelled. So as discussed, the first thing that we'll do is home the machine to get that fixed position. So with the homing complete, we're now going to work our way back over to get the bit basically on top of this corner here as close as possible. So that tip is now sitting directly above the corner of the piece of metal we put in there. So that is essentially going to be our starting point for every job. Now the X and the Y coordinates are what's relevant. We're not so much interested in the Z height because the thickness of the blocks will vary. Obviously if you want to do this um, and you have consistently thick material, then take a note of the Z measurements as well. So let's jump over and enlarge UGS. Now the coordinates that we are interested in is over here in the bottom left hand side. We can see the smaller coordinates underneath each larger number. So the ones we're interested in is 529.663, 514.001. 
Now if I open up Notepad, I'll quickly show you the piece of G code that I wrote to try and help me achieve what we're after today. So we're gonna start off by the code running G21. This lets the machine know that all measurements we'll be using are in millimeters. Then the next command is G90. This is absolute positioning. Basically means where you're doing all your measurements from a set position as opposed to incremental positioning, which is where it takes each measurement as you do it or each movement as you do it. The next command then is going to be the dollar $H, which is the home, the, um, the command for home. So this will run the sequence that we've just done where it sends it into the far right hand corner and sets its known starting position. Now the next one is the important one which is where we can input the measurements that we have just taken. Obviously here I've just left it as question marks for the time being but these are the coordinates that we're about to input. And then the final line, this G10P0L20X0Y0Z0, this is basically telling the machine to zero after that position. So in essence what we're going to do, say we're working in millimetres, say we're working from set coordinates, run the home in position, then tell the machine to travel this to this new destination that we're about to input, and then it will set that as the zero. Now this line down here is essentially the same piece of code as up above. I've just put it in a format that we need to enter it into UGS, which is each command that's separated by a semicolon and then a space. So what we want to do now is come over to these question marks and enter the coordinates that we just took. So for the X position, we have 529.663. And for the Y position, we have 514.001. Now, as I say, you can put a Z measurement in if you know your Z, your Z height is going to be consistent. For me, I kind of want to get it close, but not too close, so I'm just gonna put it in at, uh, what is the Z position, 67, so I'll put this in at about 30. And I'll lower it down 30 millimeters and get it close so we can run the Z probe when we're ready to start each job. So 30. Now what I'm simply gonna do is copy and highlight this line of code. Click copy, and then we're gonna come back over to UGS. We're gonna go machine, come down to edit macros. And once this page loads, we're then gonna click add to create a new macro. Now what you can do is give it a basic name. So we'll call this um, home position one, well, project one, I should say. And then we can enter in the G code that we've just created. Now what I'm gonna do is press Control V to paste all of this in. And there we can see it's all the coordinate, all the G code that we've just wrote has gone in there. And for the description, we'll simply say run home position, then return to start of job. So it gives us an indication of what this macro is going to do. Obviously, you can then create your own macros or however many macros you want. It's just stretched that out a bit because I've typed more in the boxes, but this is now good to go, so we can click OK. And if we come over to the macro tab, we'll now see that we have a macro called Project 1, Run Home, then Return to the Start of Job. So to make this clear, what I'm going to do is let's just jog this up and out the way a bit and put it in a bit of a random position. And we'll take it into the middle of the bed by about 300 millimeters. And we'll bring it just a bit forward, just again, just to make sure there is no relation to the original coordinates. So now when I disconnect it, we'll lose all knowledge of the coordinates that we have inputted. And this is the important part, because it allows us to keep returning to the same um, position, whether the machine has been turned on or running the same job. So we're gonna click disconnect. Just to make it sure, I'm gonna turn the power off to the machine as well. You should hopefully hear the fans die out. Now I wanna turn everything back on. And we will reconnect the machine. We can see we've got the usual unlock alarm message, so we'll click unlock. Now when I come back over to the macros tab, what it is essentially going to do is that program we've just designed. It's going to send it to the far right hand corner, do the homing sequence, then it's going to return it back to that exact position that we set, obviously slightly above the material. So let's see how it goes. So 
So there you have it, it's just run the command. We know it's just now set it back to zero, as we can see on the visualizer. It's gone back to the center of the screen. It's positioned perfectly above the corner of the material where we always need it to start. Now all I have to do at this point is run the Z probe every time I want to start it, and it gives us our exact position to start every job from now on. So we've created a corner for all of our material to sit in. We've done the macro to allow the, the head unit to always return to the exact start position that we need to on that material. So it's gonna save me so much time on this project and that's one reason I wanted to capture it. I appreciate it's a, it's a bit more of an informal video than I usually do, but hopefully you will find it useful. Now what I'm gonna do probably after I finish this project is do this properly but slightly bigger. I want to replace that end stop that I've got there and make it into a full corner piece to basically do what we've done today, but just in a bit bigger setup for when I'm using larger pieces of material. Now, the piece of G-code that I wrote for this particular uh, project, I have posted it on some of the CNC groups to get some feedback because G-code is one thing I don't know much about. And while I can write little bits like this, there probably are ways to improve it or make it more efficient. So if I get any feedback on that, I will update you in the description or the comments just to show a way that you can improve that G-code or a better way of writing it. But we've achieved what I needed to for today. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you on another video, which will probably be a bit more formal than this.